What, why'd you put it up there? Well, I thought it would be a cool angle. This wide angle lens with my head makes me look like a hot air balloon. I don't like to wear pants when I record these videos and now everyone's gonna see I'm just wearing boxers. Like, this is embarrassing. Your viewers what? might enjoy you not wearing pants. Oh wait, no, they're all guys. They're all oh. guys, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you can ask Lefty to do it for you next Lefty time. Lefty only has one arm. How is she gonna set up a camera? He's a tripod. Welcome to my channel. Now you can clearly see I'm not wearing pants. This is, can you bring the camera down a little bit? What's going on guys? Potato J here. I'm wearing pants now. You can trust me. I wouldn't lie to you. Oh. God, I need to tighten this thing. So this is the OnePlus 6 phone. It's about 530 US dollars, which is actually less than half of this iPhone 10. As a filmmaker and YouTuber, the only thing I really care out of this thing is the video quality out of this. I just want this to be as good as this so that I can make bomb cat videos. But I'm allergic to cats, so dog videos. Look slightly to your left. Slightly to your left, perfect, right there. As one of the cheaper value options on the market, I thought it'd be fair to compare this thing to an Aerie Alexa. These have been used to shoot low budget student films. You might recognize some of the stuff it's shot. How do you think the OnePlus is gonna compete? Ah. You guys know the drill by now. The OnePlus is mounted right next to the Aerie Alexa. Which camera do you think this one is? Here's camera A, and here's camera B. They actually don't look as different as I would have expected. Back to camera A, and this time around, I'm gonna turn on the headlights and light bar, which might give you a better hint at which one's which. So did you pick out your final answer yet? You don't really get anything if you get the right answer, but you know, you get to feel incrementally better about yourself. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, you guys ready for the answer? Camera A was the Aerie Alexa, camera B was the OnePlus 6. I think the easiest way to tell is from the sharpness. It looks very digital on the OnePlus 6, but the Aerie Alexa looks very natural. A little bit trickier, what's this? Is is this the $500 phone or the cinema camera that costs over a hundred times more? And here's how the other camera looks. Now to me, it's pretty obvious, maybe because I was there shooting it and also probably because I spent all day, every day playing with cameras. But I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. And here's the answer. The first one was the OnePlus 6. The Aerie Alexa was the second. <laughs> now let's just all admit it. That was surprisingly close. So is this $500 phone just as good as a cinema camera? Not quite. I think we all spent enough time looking at my dumb face. Let's move on to something cool. And there you guys have it. The difference is pretty obvious. This is slow motion in low light. A lot of dynamic range needed to capture fire. So this is when we really need that high performance camera. I love how you can see every little particle flying through the air. And here's what the raw looks like. Tons of detail in there making it a dream for colorists to work with. Ugh, but man, all that flickering, lame. In case you're not familiar, most modern lights flicker, but it's usually too fast for our eyes to see it. But when you take a camera and shoot it in slow motion, it becomes a whole lot more visible. So if you need to light a scene for slow motion, you need flicker free lights. So far, everything's been shot on a wide angle lens to make the phone look as good as possible. But the beauty of cinema cameras are the lenses. So if you pop on a tighter lens on the Aerie Alexa and zoom in the phone, there's zero comparison. 
Why would they name a phone one plus six? That's weird. Whenever you look it up on Google, it just says seven. So clearly phones are still a long ways away from being able to compete with cinema cameras. But the OnePlus wasn't necessarily designed to be a premium product. OnePlus is going after value. This phone costs less than one memory card for this camera. As a matter of fact, this viewfinder alone, this little thing right here that lets you see what you're filming and control the camera, this thing alone costs as much as a camera like this. This is a dope camera and we use it for a lot of documentary work, but even this can't compete with the area. So unless you have one of these laying around, let's talk about how to get the most out of your $500 phone. The video camera uses this lens, and even if you zoom in on the camera, it doesn't switch to a telephoto lens or anything like that. So don't touch that zoom. That's definitely a restriction because it's harder to get those tight shots with shallow depth of field, but just stay wide, focus on getting a good composition. There's a time and place to keep the camera up here to shoot everything eye level, but you can get some super dramatic shots sometimes by just bringing the camera down to waist level. Maddie knows a little something about cameras, right? I think you have a YouTube channel or something. Yeah, I started one last year. Uh, I'm gonna give you the real one. It's Matti Haapoya. Really? <laughs> yeah. Matti Haapoya is fine. Okay, so Michael, what do you think about <laughs> He doesn't need any introduction. We were talking about like shoulder rigs versus I like to use a, an easy rig because I like to shoot down here, like from the hip almost. A, because it's like better for, for random people when they're not used to being in front of a camera instead of, you know, Hey, how's it going? Uh, can you answer my question? Like, that's super awkward, but if I shoot from down here and I'm like talking to them, they barely even notice the camera. But also I like the angle from down here. One, because it makes them look larger than life. And then two, because usually it's cleaner. There's, there's usually leading lines in the ceiling or wherever. If you shoot down, point it down. Look at all this garbage down there. Shoot up, look how clean we are. I actually learned how to compose wide shots through the iPhone, like through Instagram, because you don't have shallow depth of field to uh, rely on. And so that's how I really started to kind of play around with like composition and figuring out, okay, not just the, the person or thing that you're shooting, but everything else around it too. I find myself uh, using like an 85 millimeter all the time and using super shallow depth of field all the time when I was starting out. Yeah. But a lot of good films and videos, they stay on a wide shot. And you said you usually shoot on a wide lens anyways, right? Yeah, I, I don't remember the last time I've put on anything past 35 mil. I, I just love the wide range. And I used to like always, my go-to was a 50 mil back in the day and then maybe an 85. And now like I never touch those. I like how it, it makes the audience feel like they're right here with us. I don't know, what are you shooting on right now? Yeah, this is an 11, but it's on an APS it's sensor. APS, so. so it's but similar it's, to 16. Yeah, so it feels like you're hanging out with us. Whereas if it was on a zoom lens over there, it would feel like you're kind of like spying on us like a peeping Tom and that's <laughs> weird. There's a time and place for a tight lens, like yeah. 50 millimeter, 85. I shoot on those all the time 100%. and blur out the background. Yeah. But a really valuable skill to have is being on that wide angle lens. When you have pretty even lighting and a wide angle shot, if you compose it carefully, you'll get pretty good results. Oh, so sure. that, that's a great way to get started and learn and get really familiar with the camera because even if you get a better camera, that doesn't necessarily lead to better work right away just nah. because of the fact that you have better equipment. You have if, to- If you want to get better, limit yourself to an iPhone for a little bit and then you're really gonna learn the whole comp like composition thing. You don't have all the extra gadgets and stuff on a real camera to rely on. And aside from what Michael Hapajoa says, here is the biggest piece of advice I can give you guys. Sometimes knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do. So you should never, ever peel the skin off an apple. Oxygen is great, right? Like we all love to breathe it. Mm, that's some delicious oxygen, but it's not always great. Oxidation is a very powerful and damaging effect. For example, something as strong as steel can oxidize and start to rust. So something that powerful and strong can become very soft and brittle and weak. Same exact thing happens to our body. Our bodies can oxidize everything inside basically becomes old, rusty, it ages us, it makes it easier for us to get all kinds of diseases like cancer, diabetes, you name it. So to prevent our bodies from getting oxidized and basically aging and rusting, we need something called antioxidants. It's essentially like anti-rust coating for your body. And a lot of those antioxidants live in the skin of the apple. How do we know it's all in the skin? Well, it's easy. If you peel an apple and leave it for a few days, it looks like this. I do not want to eat that. This is smelling really bad and it's pretty close to my nose. I want to throw up. These apples are the same age, only difference is I skinned this one a few days ago and all the oxidation occurred on this one because it didn't have that skin antioxidant layer. So this is what your organs are going to look like if you don't have the antioxidants and this is what it should look like. 
Okay. This is a much sexier organ, don't you think? The skin is loaded with fibers and they found that if you eat a whole apple, it'll actually help you lose weight, opposed to eating a peeled apple, which will make you gain weight over time because you don't have the fibers and all the nutrition that lives in the skin to balance out the yummy goodness that's inside. This is completely off topic, yeah, but what do you expect from a potato Jeff video? Something articulate and properly constructed? And always remember that the sun is bigger and brighter than any light that money can buy. So always be cautious of where the sun is at whatever time of day. And Obviously, we all know golden hour right before sunsets. The sky is very nice and gold and everything just looks beautiful no matter where you point the camera. But every location is different. For example, here, I'm in the shade right now, so everything's pretty even. But at different times of the day, it's gonna look different. So that's why location scouting is really important to have. There's apps out there on your phone like Sunseeker that could tell you where the sun's gonna be at what hour. I'm getting chewed up by mosquitoes. This is not cool, I'm miserable. The same location can look completely completely different, just a couple hours apart. For example, this place, there's a tree right here, so we're all in the shade right now, but if we skip to a later hour where the sun's directly above us, here's what it looks like. So right now, this is one of the worst possible times to be filming. It's midday, the sun's coming straight down. It's causing all these raccoon eye shadows on my face. I'm sitting on top of a dark green grass, which isn't causing any bounce on my face. The person you're trying to film is a total diva, and they think they're hot stuff because they have 75,000 subscribers. Just all around bad news, try to avoid this kind of lighting situation, no matter what camera you have. And also, I wasn't a huge fan of the super contrasty and saturated color profile out of this, so if you learn the basics of color correction, it'll go a long way. From what I can see, I'd wanna probably lower that saturation just a little bit, shift the colors a little bit around, and maybe lower that digital sharpening a little bit, make it look a little bit more organic and smooth. But remember to never go overboard with color grading this kind of stuff. Usually, you just wanna add a little set touch just to even things out a little bit and balance things the way you want. One of the things you could do is get some of these clamps that hold down on your phone and this one has a quarter inch thread so you can throw this on any tripod like this and never ever underestimate a locked off shot. A shot from a tripod is awesome. You don't need all your shots to be moving all the time. You can just really do a lot just by this once you get lighting and composition down. Especially if you drink as much coffee as me, then this handheld jitter is gonna make everything you film look like the Blair Witch Project. By the way, my good friend Chris Rollins came to town the other day and we had a jolly good time, but please don't make a big deal out of it. We put a super wide angle lens on the Aria Alexa and compared it side by side with the GoPro. So if you're curious to see the results of that, go check out his channel. And also huge thanks to Angel and all her super rad friends for coming out and helping us with that fire breathing sequence. And I know you want some fiery explosions on your Instagram feed, so make sure you give them all a follow. Handles in the description. And yeah, hanging out with Maddie in Santa Cruz was so much fun. Keep an eye out for my cameo in his channel. You won't regret it, I pinky promise. And last but not least, don't you dare ever peel that apple.